good afternoon good afternoon yeah yeah so given that there's only small set of people let's keep it uh, uh, slightly informal also uh, have anything uh, to so to say uh, walk you through and say that do you do this 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 you'll get admitted into cmu <laughs> there is nothing no set of uh, formula for understand who is in the room uh, uh, tell me third years or all so fourth fourth year okay seventh semester yeah okay um, so the so have you read the page that is put there making sense right a little bit yeah okay so you, that's the uh, introduction so i'll let you then ask questions to me let you ask questions and then i'll try and answer and then i will give you so to say take away points from there move on from wherever you ask me questions why don't you start? Why don't some of you start and then I'll take care of it. There's lots of questions here. Uh, if you see, and I've been maintaining uh, this page with tons of questions, answers, long, long answers. And off late, I've started also maintaining, uh, uh, for example, uh, anybody knows him? You know him? Yeah, some of you know him. So I did a, uh, I don't know whether it's going to show. Uh, but I did a session with him on admissions. Oh, this is on YouTube, yeah. So... I'm talking to, you know... Uh... Right? So I do these kind of sessions with people in the US. I'm, I'm scheduled one with somebody uh, first week of October. Uh, these are people who have uh, done admissions. Uh, ben particularly has been the chair for uh, admissions for many, many years, and the person whom I'm going to be speaking in October is also a yeah, So their wisdom, right, their understanding, and particularly they're seeing it, you may be applying this year and she may be looking at the application. Right, so that was my uh, intent for doing this Facebook live sessions with people. Uh, but, but let's start questions. You guys ask questions and then I will try and take it from somewhere there. Because there's no set things, right? I assume you understand. Admissions scale, there's not a set of things that you can, and, and the topic is also super widely open, and it's very, very subjective to one individual. Right? Admissions for you is very different from admissions for him. Yeah. Uh, how do we start selecting the universities you're going to apply? Oh, start selecting the universities you're going to apply. So let's, let's uh, uh, do this. Let's So I would, so the question is how do I, uh, where do I start and how do I decide on what institutes to apply, right? There are multiple, uh, so to say, factors. One of the main factors is how much money you want to spend, right? Because the number, because otherwise you could apply to 50 universities and don't care about, right? So the first thing you want to keep in mind is how many applications do you want to send because that's directly proportional to the money that you'll spend. Uh, generally, I've seen about, I mean, very, very picky students, I mean, they're saying that, no, I want to go to only these three places. They will submit, let's take 10 applications, right? Uh, people who are not sure of where they want to go, not sure of their application, whatever, they end up sending about 15 to 17, 18 applications. That's how I will say. Uh, but, the, uh, but the thing to keep in mind is, I think uh, it's there also. So you want to keep uh, things like dream, Right, uh, safe, and so to say probable. I would do something like this, right? I would pick saying, okay, here is three schools I really want to study. I want to go to Stanford, I want to go to MIT, I want to go to CMU. And whatever I'm saying is all very random. So I have no particular reason for saying these three things because uh, in computer science, if you're studying vision, your interest may be in some school. In uh, computer science, if you want to study uh, let's take robotics, you want to go to different schools. So it also depends on what, what, so to say, subdivision of computer science are you interested in, right? So if I were to do this, I'll put the three on top, uh, and then I'll put two or three in the safe, the rest I will do the between. So if I have to apply for 10, I would pick two on top, two at the bottom, and six in the middle. Roughly, that's what I would do. I would take up 20, 25% Uber, 20, 25%. Safe, you can even go lower, right? Because you say that, no, I want to apply to uh, these institutes which are dead sure that I will get in. Just apply only two, that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, I have a question like, how do you classify 
So that will, it is not that hard to infer that if you really look at it, right? Let's take if you have a, a CGPA of uh, 7 and you have a GRE score of uh, 310 and your LORs are coming from three faculty who have taught you, who also does, is not clear to me whether it is very strong and you have not done very cool projects. So now my safe is very clear, right? I can't put Georgia Tech in my safe. I can't put, oh, let's take some other university rank. So this, this uh, um, so to say, universities that I'm listing also, they're all generally in the some band. You want to, so depending, so because this, this classification is directly implied by your profile, right? When I applied, this was different. When you apply, it will be very specific to you, right? So therefore, uh, it should my SAFE be the top five schools of computer science? Or should my SAFE be 10 to 15 rank computer science? It's a question that only you can answer. Not you, meaning if I see you separately, I can also help you. But for as a broader, I don't know what, what will that fit, right? So depending on your profile, you can figure out what's SAFE. You can broadly say, okay, anything, so I, the suggestions I have is apply between 50 and 70 rank computer science. That's a SAFE if your profile is not that strong. If your profile is strong, you could actually do only 20 to 30 years safe. You keep the top five as dream, next 15, five to, or six to 20 as you are probable, and then anything about 20, keep it as safe. Uh, because if your profile is, uh, let's take somebody uh, super popular in the country is writing you a LOR, uh, it, should be, it should work out very in, much in favor for you. Uh, like somebody in MSR, MSR who's somebody very good who's writing an LOR, I think it's, it's, it's going to be very useful. Did, did I answer your question to some extent? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh, so that's a, uh, so g give me a sense of what kind of programs are you applying, masters or PhD in general? Just how many of your masters? Oh, PhD? Only one, okay. So the question of, so to say, the professorship comes mostly for PhD, right? Because, because at the master's, majority of the times you're going to go pay, you're going to go uh, uh, do your coursework, majority of the times it ends there, right? There's no strong interactions between, uh, so for example, I have a, a student, she graduated last year uh, from uh, CMU, no projects, nothing. Started master's, did all the, a coursework and she's done and she's doing very, very well. And no interactions with faculty. So therefore she does not have to think of which faculty should I apply. For a PhD, I think advisor is more prominent than a, so to say, the institute. You want to work with, hey, figure out how to get admitted there. But the next level is probably more important for masters, which is uh, you also want to figure out whether you want to go to a masters in computer science program or masters in data science. These are two different categories now. MS and CS is a vanilla or, or a, so to say, the starting point of computer science. Whereas MS in data science is very specific. So that's a choice again you will have to make. Which is it, should I apply to MSDS at CMU or should I apply at MSCS at CMU? The, it is not only you, but it's also the other uh, thing, right? The number of students that they take in MS and CS is so small. Right, you can't, I mean, your profile has to be really good to look at MS and CS. But whereas if you want to say that, no, 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 I'm not really, I don't really care about the program I'm going, but I care about the brand. I want to be a Harvard alum, that's it. Right, so then your, your goal is not necessarily that I, I want to pick this particular uh, program, I just want to get into Harvard. I have, I've had a lot of students like that. They say that uh, whatever it is, I want to just study in top 10. Right, they will pick a program which does not have a lot of, so to say, requirements strictly to get in, but at the end of the day, they are alum of some big school, top 10 school. Which does not matter, right? At the end of the day, if you really look at it, the, the ba at least this is the way I see, the band matters, which is that are you in the top five or this set of class, and then are you in this class, that band matters, but I don't think so, this is my view again. Uh, is there any difference within the band? It's not clear to me yet. Can you, if you ask me, oh, tell me, should I go to Stanford or should I go to CMU? Actually, there are students who have asked me exactly this question, CMU versus Stanford. My, my consistent answer to them is, which weather do you want to live? Do you want to live in a uh, weather which does not snow or weather which snows? That's the only decision that you can make. 
if you really have admit in both the places. Because rest all, yeah, CME mein padke, Stanford mein padke, I, I think there is very little difference you can find and there is, there is no difference I can also argue. So therefore, if you're in the class band, it's okay. Whichever you study, it will not matter after some point in time. But this alumni tag matters at the end of the day. I mean, do, I, do, I, do you want to call yourself as a Georgia Tech alum or a CMU alum? That's, because that's a lifelong affiliation. Uh, some people make a choice like that. This year, I had a student who made a choice of uh, just on the, so to say, um, fellowship. She got admitted in one place where she has to pay f fees, another place which is in, not in the same band, but around, not very bad also. But she shows the place where she does not have to pay money. She's just getting RA and fees is waived, RA, completely free, free education, so to say. Uh, that's a different choice now, right? I've had the same question two years before a girl chose the opposite. She said that it's okay. I will pay it, but the return is pretty high. Because the, because the class is slightly above, I'll go to the school because it's a lifelong thing. I'm ready to pay the money now, but the long-term thing is return is pretty high. So it's all personal choices, right, at the end of the day. See, I think person like me only can help uh, if you know what you're looking for. If you're sitting and say, you know, I want to admit in the US, uh, I can't help you, right? Because you have to figure out a lot of the questions that I end up actually, or a lot of the sessions like this that I do, I end up asking more questions than answers, right? Because you have to figure out which whether you want to live. You have to figure out whether you're ready to pay fees. You have to figure out what projects, now you're in the fifth semester, you basically have only like, one more year, like 14, 15 months is what you're left with. If you were to apply in fall 2020, you just have 14 months. What can you do with this 14 months is the question you should ask. And what do you have? What are the facilities and faculty do you have to pick that up is a question only you can ask. But I'm, my, so to say, uh, take on this is like, I can post questions probably which you have not thought about, right? So what kind of questions, what would add value to your CV is a different question to ask in that sense. Yeah? Okay, what else? Questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think in the masters, right, the general way that the masters program would do is, um, so I, there are four key components. Your CV, your CGPA, your LOR, your SOP. Those are the four key components that plays ad admissions roles. So you can clearly see for masters, they don't have to do anything very creative, very, so to say, uh, subjective to you. They have an Excel sheet or they have a database. From, uh, uh, there's an interface where they say, all GRE scores greater than 330. And all CGPA is greater than 9.9, 9.0, right? And uh, that's it. So this itself, if you're in the top class of institutes, this itself will be very high, right? If, if, if I have 20 seats to fill, how many, th how many do you think with this category will be there at CMU? Pretty large, right? Uh, people who have nine CGPA across the world and people who have gotten 330 plus on GRE, I mean, they probably will have like 200 or 500 or 800 people in that category itself. Now, why do they need to do anything more? Now they will look for, okay, let's now look for SOPs which are good, right? CMU is known for these kind of programs or these kind of areas. So let's look for people who have written SOPs around that. LOR, right? LOR also plays a big role because uh, institutes that they have seen before are the institutes that they generally want to come back also. Right? They want to say, okay, IITs, they would have, they would have listed all IITs there. If, if, if the LOR is from one, one of the IITs, you're just bumped up in the list, so to say. So master's program, this is how it usually it, it will get done, which is just by filtering itself, they get what they want. If only if they don't, uh, let's take if I have 20, uh, 20 uh, seats to fill and I do this filtering, I get only 16. Now I will change, that's a, sub, that's a subjective decision that the committee member will take. Say, okay, let's do the CGPA from nine to 8.7. Do we get more? Yeah, we get 40, now they are done. Right, so that's how masters, the PhD is very, very different, right? PhD admissions, they, you, you, meaning there are, there are like N number of ways to get, 
so to say, into a PhD program. You apply whatever, but you can target the faculty. Your, your SOP can be targeted exactly only to that faculty. One faculty you want to work with, your, your projects can be targeted. You can create a, so to say, profile which that faculty will get attracted to. Whereas in masters, there's no faculty getting involved. Few programs like, for example, UIUC has a program where faculty actually looks at the uh, at master's applications also because UIUC funds. All student, I think most of the students who get into UIUC get funded. So for that, they are like, no, 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 let's not do this filtering business. We'll do filtering business, but after that, let's just look at CV individually also. Because there, the faculty have to choose the student also for masters. I will tell you before that, okay, 20 students are getting admitted. Generally, they will have a sense that which faculty is going to fund which student and stuff like that. So I have a student this year, uh, last year, uh, 2017, who got into UIUC. Uh, so he knew master's uh, thesis, what he's going to do. He went to Amazon to do his internship now. He came back, so yeah. Okay, what else? But what kind of schools generally are you guys interested in? Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> these are great questions. So. Six standard, so social networks is the area that I should work on, right? Right, right, uh, right. So, so yeah, I no, I mean, I would actually prefer quite work out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, uh, generally, if you see the. Um, Deadlines are, I think, starting December 15th, broadly. It'll be around. December 15th, it'll go till Jan, Feb types. So uh, if you are a, a last minute guy, I would, I, I would anyway keep a month or so for SOP writing. Because you must have seen, right? If you've read some of these points very carefully, it's not easy to write SOP. Because SOP is, so some very distinct point. SOP is not your CV. You should not reproduce saying, oh, uh, so general SOPs, this is how they start, right? When I was in ninth standard, I saw the first computer and the, I loved computer. This is how all, many of the SOPs would start. Right? But you'll have to be creative, right? So, and you should not walk through uh, reverse chronologically saying this is what happened in my life. That's also not a right way of writing SOP, right? You want to, you want to make a story, you want to have a, a thing. So for, that takes time. Right? It's not that simply, at least I, I don't see students writing a strong SOP. So I, I would keep uh, a month or so for SOP. LOS are also hard, right? You have to get your professors, you get it prepared. Uh, they, have, they need time for it and all of that. So I would say now. So actually this itself may be cutting short in some times. Uh, but generally August, September should be okay. Uh, so the advantage, you sh the way uh, if you're doing, you'll all do next year, right? I would suggest flip it and do the GRE in the summer. Get it done. Because if that goes away and that has a good score, your general motivation to do all that is also higher. Let's take you spend all of this and then you get only a 319 in GRE, it's not going to go well with your application. So instead you give, so I, I generally suggest people also to give a buffer of three, four weeks. So even if you need to take a GRE again, there is this, without shortage of time, you should be able to manage everything. So July is what I would, July, June, July, you should get wrapped your GRE, August, September, SOP leave some time for uh, LORs and CVs and all of that. Because for, if you're applying for different programs, you also have to prepare differently, right? For example, if you're applying for MS and CS program in top two or three schools, they also ask you to make a video. So I remember students making a video of them. So you need to let the time for that. Uh, if you're applying for HCI or these kind of design programs, you have to have a portfolio. Portfolio creation is not that very simple. So did the SOP make sense? There's a lot of small, small points. Don't plagiarize, don't pick it up from the internet. Get the non-CS people read it, because I think that's another thing that, because 
engineer, engineering students and computer science people have been trained to think in a certain way. You will almost always write like an algorithm, only your SOP also, but it has to be with life, right? So you bring that life, you should give it to people who are not computer scientists, or computer science students. Anything, did you, did you have any clarifications on the SOP? Yeah, makes sense? Yeah. So you have to read about that place. So, so that's something, so in the time frame, you should probably let about a couple of weeks only for researching on the universities that you're applying. And you want to research on the faculty, you want to research on past students, you want to research on the alums where they're working now, you want to go to their LinkedIn page and see where their alums are. Those are easy information, right? You have to go to the profile of the university, look at the alums there, you will see there'll be a chart, I think, which says uh, people working for Facebook, people working for Google, it'll give you a chart. So that gives you an understanding, okay, okay, if I do the uh, uh, NYU master's in CS, probably more chances that I'll fit this kind of job. So all this is publicly available now. So you have to let time to do it, and then you, you decide where you want to, uh, which one is fit for you. Uh, because I think there are some programs which are uh, which are heavy on. So, for example, UIUC Masters is super heavy on your research, so to say, thesis. Whereas, if you look at CS, CMU has nothing. There's not even a mention of thesis types. Right? So, that's the thing that you want to pick from. And in in UIUC, what kind of work do you want to do? Is something you have to argue in the. SOP saying that, oh, I'm actually good for doing this because I have these kind of skills. And of course, you will also uh, modify your SOP a little bit here and there for the appropriate university. No, second, second um, way that you're mentioning is a bad idea. So you want to keep a target as much as possible, keep it targeted to one particular program, one particular, so to say, keep your profile also like that. And I think there's a line in the answer also. And then somewhere you also have to showcase that you're open for doing different things also. You want to argue that, no, I want to do only AI, data science, and security, but you know what? I can tell you that other times I have actually tried other things and I'm okay to open to do it. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But you can't really take a one year, right? It'll end up being two years, right? It'll naturally become two years because if you do only one year, you get only five months extra. You graduate in May or June, and then by that year end, if you apply, you don't have anything. So two years, Prominently, almost all people who have worked with me for last 10 years, who have spent these two years, their, their uh, so to say, band goes one level above, consistently. That, uh, but, but you'll also have to pick what you have to do in that two years. Just going and working for Infosys will not help. Just going and working with TCS will not help. Um, but if you do right kind of things, that two years, for example, uh, we have had students, uh, uh, from Triple I Delhi, those two years they worked at MSR, and their application is like, they just get every place that they apply. Uh, but that's MSR. Anything else? Yeah. What bank of colleges? Yeah, but that depends on what you want to do also, right? Uh, yeah, just HCGPA is not giving me any information to add. Uh, because let's take if you have a HCGPA and you have a Turing Award winner writing you an LOR, 
or Nobel Prize winner writing an LOR. Now your, now your application weight is very different compared to me writing an LOR with a 8 CGPA. So I think it's, it's a combination. Uh, that's why I always think that it's a combination of these four things. Uh, and uh, generally, in, at least in the US, they're looking for all of this to be good. If you don't have one good, the way to compensate it is the others should be, one of the others should be super good. That's the only way you can compensate. If you have an HCGPA which you think that is not good, is low for this institute, I think your, either your LOR or your SOP uh, should be very different. Your CV should have a lot more projects, lot more hands-on stuff to showcase. Otherwise, HCGPA will not take you to much places. Whereas on the contrary, HCGPA is okay for a PhD admit if you have the other components, which is very good, right? You have done already some research experiences, potentially a publication or something that people, you can brag about saying you have a pu close to a publication and stuff like that. What is the um, status until now for grad school? How many people have gone from here? Uh, you guys know? No, in CS to api sabse bade batcho. So let's talk about other batches. Other grad school, what kind of places have they gone? Uh, what departments are they from? Mechanical. Mechanical, no? okay. And what kind of schools? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, nice. So, which means, uh, so the, the, the reason why I ask that question is people should know, right, uh, that these students come from this institute, what kind of thing. So, the alumni actually makes a big, big difference. I know actually this year I have a student who's going to, who's already started in MS and CS. I clearly know that the, one of the big factor for his admission is the student who went two years before. She must have had a super impact in the group, department, whatever, and they were interested in actually, because three people applied from our, my research group itself to that program, and this guy got him. And so I think the alumni cycle also helps a lot. else? To do what? Oh, how can you make it better? So some, some things that I end up, uh, at least students who work with me end up doing is use your network for a lot of these things. Use your seniors from here who have gone to check your CV, SOP, uh, uh, your your projects, ask them, because it is also, so there's also the saying, right? Sometimes it is not about what you did that matters. It is about what you say, what you did that matters, right? So therefore, you must have done something interesting, but CV may ek item hogi, I did this. But that doesn't cut, cut eyes, because you did not use the right words also. You probably said I was a full stack developer at this place, full stack, whatever that is, right? Uh, but that doesn't cut anything. So you have to also give it to the right people who can give you these kind of suggestions, CV building, uh, how to present myself better. Uh, yeah, so that's how I would use my time from now. If I were to apply now, I would make use of my network in checking all these things for me, SOP, LORs. LORs, of course, you can't do much. Uh, LORs also, you can't write the draft, but you should give enough information to the LOR writer. Because for me, I, I actually, I have kind of said some procedures for this. I have a form which people have to fill, uh, which has all the details that I want. And then I pick it up from there, saying, okay, what courses did you take with me? What projects did you do? What was the project? Uh, did you get any award prizes in the project? Blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of these questions. They fill. I get a nice Excel sheet in front of me when I have to write an LOR. I just pick things from different places and put it together. So you have to give that to somebody also, right? Because why would Nipun know 
that uh, everything that you, you, he may remember you, I was a good student in class, he got a good grade, but he will not remember your project, he will not remember anything extra you did with him. And please do not expect anybody who is writing the letter also, they will spend time, uh, okay, iske saath humne kya kya kar raha, ye nahi nahi na, it's, it's not, meaning one, naturally also I can't do it because I don't store it. Right? Why would I store 40 students, 50 students who have spent time with me and exactly what they did with me? So that's when you should help us. Just list down, okay, here is what I did. And actually in that listing, you should also list down what you did not do with me also, right? You could have done four things in campus, which I should write about. For example, students make, uh, give me this information that they were the cultural club society secretary. They organized our tech fest. They managed the ACM chapter. I would not remember all that, right? So that helps me to write the LOR. Yeah, so I would optimize in these things. Uh, I mean, you can go read about what an LOR is, what are the components. So you can give those components to the person who's writing the letter. And please expect, a, please keep buffer for them because not all of them will be able to submit the in time. You have to nudge them because if you choose as more and more senior people, they're going to have less and less, they're going to have less and less time for uploading because, so today I write LORs for the first batch which graduated from IIIT Delhi, which is like six years before because they finished BTEC, they went to work, now they are applying for PhD and I have to write. So it's not only the current students I'm writing, it is like six batches into the number of people on average from every batch. So you end up writing, that's why I must, in the first part I would have written some 400 letters or 450 letters I've already written in just eight years. It's not just the 480, it's not 450 letters of just one batches. It's this old, ba for example, now uh, people are applying for MBA. So he did an undergrad from us, he went to work, now he's applying for MBA. So even that letters have to be written. So just give enough time for the person who's writing the letter. Anything else? No, good, if nothing else. Uh, anyway, my email address is on that website, so you can easily email. Uh, but but uh, if, uh, uh, if any of you are on Facebook, Facebook is a better medium for you to actually consume some of the content because I'm going to do this session first week of October, again with somebody in, uh, in the US about admissions and stuff. So if you're connected to me on Facebook, you can just consume all this content more easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what I could not have. So uh, in any case, given that only one PhD student is here or potential applicant is here, my experience uh, uh, was uh, um, very, very hard to start with. It could be just because the school I went to is also like that. It's just grueling uh, hard in terms of things get done and I was from India going there to study. So you have to, you have to catch up with the cultural shock, academic shock. There's lots of shocks that happen when you start uh, studying in the US, particularly PhD. So the, the things that I think I feel uh, my grad school experience is one, I think it just changed me completely. I, I uh, um, in terms of the way I think, in terms of things, it could be also because I was there consuming a lot of things. I mean, go attend a lot of talks, talk to a lot of people, interact with people, try to understand what's going on, ask questions, which we are not generally trained for, uh, right? We generally come, sit, go, uh, ask questions. These are things that I think that uh, I would not have gotten uh, without a grad school. The other biggest thing which probably I started with for the PhD is just this thing of I want to do, uh, I want to talk about topics. Uh, so at least if I talk about one topic, which I, which I think that I know well, uh, people should respect my views also. That only a PhD will give you. At least PhD will offer you that opportunity to embrace that. Consume a lot of things. I think grad school, mein the, the thing is, if you go to masters, I tell my students that milk out every money that you paid them because you're paying a lot of money. 
डोंट वेस्ट मनी डोंट वेस्ट टाइम इन डूइंग वो मैं ये इंटर्नशिप बाहर करता हूँ ये कंपनी के साथ मैं करना है राइट डोंट वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ दैट बिकॉज यू स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ मनी टू गो टू दिस गुड स्कूल जस्ट गेट थिंग्स आउट ऑफ देयर बिकॉज देर सो मेनी गुड थिंग्स दैट गोज ऑन एन एवरी गुड कैंपस देर इवन इफ यू टेक टॉप ट्वेंटी फाइव actually even top 50 i think there's there's like 100 things at any given point in time technically to consume the apple guy will show up somewhere facebook guy will come uh, there's always some uh, discussion technical all of that going on so consuming all that only added value to me i guess and and of course my grad school also has this uh, advantage of turing award winners nobel prize winners being around so you go speak to them meaning you're in a you're in a grad school party or something a turing award winner winner is next to you what do you do i <laughs> uh, at least brush your shoulders with them uh, and get some effect on you right at least if you do that i think that helps which is what we miss sometimes here in grad school right grad school yahan pe it is less strenuous uh, but that less strenuous also comes with this fact that you don't get these kind of opportunities